This is our last show that is audio only and then we'll be coming back to video i'm talking to you youtube and facebook those of you who watch on the live stream i appreciate all of you guys thank you so much again for all of you who got me over that 100 subscriber list on youtube now i am now officially youtube.com slash htbt you know or how to build a tent sorry i need to get that right youtube.com slash how to build a tent it's a late night I got my wife packing in the background. If you hear some stuff going on, I'm just going to blame her. Yeah, that's her laughing. I finally got her to laugh at one of my jokes. It's only taken 332 episodes, but she finally did it. She finally did it. Trump made a deal with the Democrats to get the USMCA passed. That is the new enhancement, I'm calling it, of NAFTA between Mexico and Canada and the United States. That is going to be a great enhancement that will help stimulate jobs. Hopefully that will help with the stock market as well in the next couple of days and we don't have the same kind of December we had last year. Oh, I got to tell you about a dumb thing I did. I'll talk about that later in the show. But the funny thing is, and I want you to think about this, at the same time the Democrats are agreeing to this trade deal because it has to go through Congress. They have to approve it. And so they're getting the deal ready to do that and to present it to Congress to pass and for Trump to sign. While they are doing this, while the Democrats are doing this, Nancy Pelosi is apparently signing off on this. They're impeaching the guy. Now, if you thought they had, or you had as the Democrats, a legitimate shot at impeaching Trump, if you really thought he was impeachment worthy for lack of a better word where he was doing things that made him unqualified to be president that you were going to throw him out and override an election right before election time if you thought any of that was a smidge of legitimacy if there was a smidge of legitimacy to it you would not be passing a trade deal with the guy but you have to remember everything is political and everything has ramifications there are consequences and it's attached to a bigger picture besides the individual act impeachment the trade deal and all those things i had somebody saying like oh why couldn't they just think it was a great deal and pass it with trump and still want to say he's impeachment it's like it doesn't have to be both and those are the people that are just ignorant with politics you are in nepal if you're a politician in washington and you think trump needs to be impeached you're not passing the trade deal with the guy that just doesn't happen well, we are about three minutes into the show, and I haven't even welcomed you guys yet. Welcome to How to Build a Tent. My name is Matt Williams. Thank you for listening, watching, subscribing. Really appreciate you guys, especially for those of you who are members of the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. If you have not become a member yet, this is the time. You get one month free. You get a HTBT mug when you use the drop-down HTBT. Go over to fightlaughfeast.com, put in the drop-down HTBT, get the mug, get a free month, Gift it to somebody if you're looking for a Christmas gift, and you'll be helping support us as we roll out new shows. I hear there's an app coming along. We'll see how, or uh, when that comes along, and we'll see if it comes out when it's due, which I think is at the beginning of the month. We'll see. And you'll get tons of other great content as well. I know that there's a segment Keith and Daryl and I are on that was just a really great inv- conversation. If you haven't checked that out, go over and check that out. If you have any questions, comments, you can reach out to me at howtobuildtent.com. Find me on all the social media sites at How to Build Tent. Appreciate all of you guys subscribing, sharing the show. Um, on a serious note, though, I uh, was between my meetings. I've been traveling all the last two weeks on business meetings. I found our guy, our friend, fellow fighter in the good fight, Tom Askell, had a incident where he collapsed while he was preaching. And he's in the hospital. So if you could be praying for him, Tom Askell, he's the founder ministry guy. They have the Synodoc out, which to me is just a hipster fancy way to say documentary. Uh, by what standard, which our, our uh, friend or colleague and fellow podcaster on the Fight Left East Network, Chocolate Knox, was the one who created that. So if you guys can be praying for him and the family, that'd be great. I was watching TV in my room and I saw something really interesting. I don't get to watch TV too much anymore, so I'm just on the traveling, uh, traveling vacations slash work 
uh, events, I was watching TV and I saw an ad by Pandora and they had this great side where they were saying, pull out your camera, step one, number two, take a uh, pull or pull up your camera app. And then three, take a picture of this QR code, which is like that box that carries a whole bunch of data in it. And your phone can pick it up by just taking a picture of it. If you have a QR code app. And I just thought, man, that is a great way to easily get people to do a call of action. When you are developing processes or you are trying to manage a workflow, when you're trying to get a customer or an employee or whatever it is to do a process, you have to overcome the friction points. And typically when you're watching a commercial, when you are watching something on TV and you're being asked to do a call of action, there's a lot of friction. You have to get on your computer, get on your phone, look up wherever they're trying to send you to, and then you have to find whatever they want you to buy or subscribe to or you know join if it's a list of some kind or a membership or whatever, and then you gotta put in your credit card information, all this stuff. So the fact that I can just open my phone app, take a picture, and it takes me directly to where I need to buy reduces a lot of friction. So for, for those of you who are in business, who have a side hustle, this could be a great tool for you. And it doesn't have to be for only those of you who can afford and think still it's a good idea to advertise on TV and spend millions of dollars on a commercial, but it could be on a YouTube channel or YouTube video or YouTube commercial. If you have a podcast, maybe we can start implementing these things. You can take a picture on the HDBT show and it takes you right to the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. What a great idea. And I just thought that was worth sharing for those of you who are looking for ways to drive sales, increase sales, increase profitability. Try the QR code. And I know there are some out there on the website, or I mean, there's websites out there where you can get that for free. So check that out. And it would probably be worth giving it a shot. I was on Twitter between meetings because sometimes I just zone out on some of these meetings, to be honest. And Twitter is banning the Fox News host, Pete Hegseth, for sharing the manifesto of the Saudi shooter in Florida. And you would think, okay, well, maybe they just don't like sharing those kinds of things. They don't want to promote the shooter and all that stuff. But Twitter let mainstream outlets share the manifesto of the New Zealand shooter and the El Paso shooter because it was attempts to smear Trump. And I bring this up solely to remind us that these businesses, these platforms are not objective. They have an agenda. And to be aware of that is very important, especially with this new uh, election cycle that's coming around in 2020. Let's see what else. The Fed are expected to hold rates steady. I think they will because of the mixed bag of economic data we've been talking about in the last few days. But on the positive note, Goldman Sachs thinks the economy is just about to heat up again. And that is kind of consistent with some of the data we've seen where it looks like we have kind of bottomed out and we're going to be start to take off again, which could be a really exciting thing to see. And it'll be good for us. It'll be good for our 401ks. It'll be good for our portfolios. It'll be good for our jobs. It'll be good for our wages and a continued great environment to start a side hustle, to start a business. All right, when we get back, we're going to talk about how ridiculous these Shio warrior feminists are nowadays, how expensive the new Mac Pro is, and something I did that was really stupid, embarrassing, that I shouldn't even share with you, but I'm going to so that you can see that I am a flawed human being as well and make mistakes, and it's okay. But first, let's talk about Skillshare. If you are looking for a way to get out of the rut, if you are looking for a way to expand your creativity, add to your skills, increase the value that you can provide to increase the amount of money that you can get, Skillshare is a great opportunity to do this. Skillshare is an online learning community for the creator and all of us. They have thousands of classes in graphic, graphic design, photography, UX, UI design, creative writing, storytelling, market freelance, entrepreneurship, tons of classes that can help you develop your skills, help you increase your value proposition that you can give to people to 
in, increase your money to roll out those side hustles and maybe, hey, get that bigger raise. Their classes are on demand so you can learn at your own pace, get inspired, join a class, create something you love. I love the entrepreneurial classes, the storytelling classes, those are great. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare and get two months free when you sign up at Skillshare.com slash HTBT. That's two whole months of unlimited access to thousands of classes for free. Get started today by heading to Skillshare.com slash HTBT to sign up. That's Skillshare.com slash HTBT. Go support our sponsors as they help support us on the show. Thank you guys very much for that. (laughs) So I was in this meeting and hey babe can you not do backs right now thanks so I was in this meeting and I just got dropped off we had a rental car and my wife was taking it my son threw up all over himself got on the car seat got you know all you parents out there know what I'm talking about we've all had that happen to us and I'm talking to these three ladies in the meeting beforehand and I was like oh man my son just threw up all over myself on on my shirt and on the car seat. And they're like, well, did you clean it? And I know that's my wife. She cleaned it. It's her job. And they were a gasp. How could you say that that is your wife's job to clean the car seat? And I just, you know, drove it home because I'm not backing down. I'm like, what do you mean? That's her job. She is a stay at home mom. She's the housekeeper. I'm at work right now. How am I going to clean the car seat? She's going to go clean down on the way back. And they kept like, oh my gosh, I just couldn't believe you. Uh, the indignation I have for you right now. It is just out of control. I didn't even say that's the woman's job to do or, oh, that's my wife. That's a wifely job to do. I said, hey, that's just my wife's job to do. And somehow they just got so over the top offended. It was just absolutely hilarious to see. And of course, I don't care. What are you going to do? Like not hire me again? Are going to you know, terminate me? I don't care. <laughs> uh, so it's just really funny. I love that. We got to lean into this stuff. When you see that stuff, you need to prepare yourself. Don't back down and push back. You need to be louder than the culture warriors are of this day. Or we're never going to win this. Or we're never going to take back our culture for ourselves. All right. I teased this. I was teasing before the commercial about the Mac Pro. Do you know how much the new Mac Pro is? Do you know how much that costs? Fifty three thousand dollars, fifty two to $53,000, depending on what you get. And I br- bring that up because I was like, oh, my gosh, I didn't even know there was such a MacBook Pro that could cost that much. And I wanted to throw this out to you. Fifty two thousand dollars, fifty three thousand dollars, depending on, you know, if you get the stand or whatnot. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? To some people it is because some people use the performance to edit videos, to edit music. That's their profession. And a lot of us will be like $52,000. That's never worth it. Well, to some people it is. And that's important when we are pricing products, when we are thinking about developing something that is high end, it's not going to be right for everybody. And some people are going to question, is it worth it? But you have to remember what your target audience is and who it is. And if it's worth it to them, they will buy it. They will buy it. And so don't be scared if people will come to you and say, oh, is that worth X amount of money for what you are providing? Well, it might not be to them. And that's okay. You cannot be all things to all people. And Apple believes that the MacBook Pro that can be $53,000 is worth it for some people. And that's okay if it's not worth it for everyone else. It's okay. All right, I think I did something dumb. And I I mean, I don't think I did. I know I did something dumb. I was trading options this morning and there are two stocks that I trade often to kind of hedge day-to-day trading. The SVXY and the UVXY, which are trading the VIX. And one is the inverse exposure of the VIX and one follows the VIX. So. What that means is one of them, the SVXY, is the inverse. So when the VIX goes down, which is the volatility index, if when it goes down, this goes up, this index goes up. And when the VIX goes um, up, the UVXY goes up, 
with it. So one goes down when the VIX goes up and one goes up with the VIX and one goes down with the VIX at the same time, one tracks it. And I was just trading on my way to work, on the way, on the way to meetings, and I was half thinking and I bought a bunch of puts for the wrong one. The one, I was expecting the market to go up and I bought puts for the inverse exposure of the VIX and I ended up losing like a hundred bucks before I caught it really quickly and uh, um, hundreds of bucks to be honest. And I caught it real quickly, but that just goes to show that we can all make mistakes and that you shouldn't rush yourself and you should be really certain about what you're investing in. Do not copy me and it does not pay to rush through your investing portfolio. Even me, after I'm talking about it, you treat it like a business, you need to do a lot of research, you need to make sure that you are treating it like a side business. I, even I sometimes don't even follow my own advice. So there you go, I did something dumb, it cost me hundreds of dollars, but luckily I caught it right away. <laughs> Uh, lastly, this was an interesting one. This is a little fun note to end this show with. Wymo, I've talked about it before, the self-driving alphabet car company where they are coming out with a pilot in Phoenix right now. They've been doing it for a while now. This is interesting. So on an average $10 Uber ride, Waymo could do it for $5. That is, this self-driving car taxi service will cut the cost in half to 50%. And they estimate this service to be worth $105 billion. That's eight times what Lyft is currently. So no wonder so many companies are trying to go after self-driving cars. $105 billion business instantly, self-driving cars, and the Alphabet, Google, is already testing it. Kind of amazing stuff. All right, we'll talk to you next time in video. Go out, be successful, have a good day.